Africa's diversity enriches our cultural life and lifestyle in so many ways. And Chef Sylvester Naya has tapped into our shared heritage for his special Africa Day inspired menu. It promises to be a delicious mix of tradition and innovation. So let's get cooking. Hi guys, welcome back to my kitchen. So for Africa Day, I got a beautiful South African menu that I'm gonna run with. So I got a gravy soaking bunny chow, a top poiki course, and I got a laka chaka laka. So to start my curry, I'm gonna start off with my onions in a dry heated pan. I'm gonna add some of my truffle oil. I'm gonna add a touch of garlic, not too much. And then I'm gonna just mix that up for a little bit just so I can mix my ingredients. I'm gonna add my coriander, but in traditional thing, I'm gonna add my dania. Just bruise my leaves a little bit. I'm not gonna chop these ones up, just to get the natural oils and flavors out of that. At this stage, you wanna make sure that your pan is nice and hot, because when you're adding the meat, you want your meat to brown. It's not gonna cook immediately. You want it to cook in the gravy that you create for the gravy soakers. So you can let your onions go for about a minute or two. Okay, I'm gonna add my lamb now. Also, if there's any fat on the lamb, you want that fat to be rendered down before you create your gravy. I'm gonna give that a mix. You got a nice flavor and fragrance of the lamb coming out there. I'm gonna start by adding a touch of my cumin to that. A touch of turmeric for color. And the famous mother-in-law masala. I'm gonna give that a mix. You want the curry powder to burn just a little bit. The right time to throw in your tomato is as soon as you get a nice smoky flavor. You can see my meat's taking a good color from the chili powder that I've put in. I'm gonna put a bit of my jam tomato puree. Gonna give that a mix. Gonna add the gravy soakers inside now so they can soak into the curry. Gonna give that another mix so the potatoes are covered in the gravy. I'm gonna add a little bit more coriander. My lamb curry is looking good, it's simmering away. It's gonna take at least another 30 minutes for the lamb to be soft and tender and the potatoes to be soaked with gravy. In the meantime, I'm gonna start doing my chicken poiki. Nice helping of butter into a hot pan. We're gonna get a lot of smoke from this. I'm gonna put in my chicken into my heated butter. I've removed most of the skin off my chicken because I don't want it to be too fatty. So you're gonna let that go for about five to eight minutes on each side. While the chicken's getting some golden brown color in it, I'm gonna give my lamb a bit of a mix. Okay, so my lamb's looking good, it's coming off the bone nicely there. I can smell that butter getting into my chicken. Oh, look at that. Golden brown, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Amazing color, that butter is soaking into the chicken. There's no skin on it, so no extra fat. I'm gonna put my onions just over all of the chicken. So this is also gonna cool the butter down a little bit. Over this now, let's add a touch of paprika. I don't want to change this into a curry, it is a poiki. I'm going to give that a small stir. I'm not going to turn the chicken, I'm just going to get the onions into the butter that's already in the pan. I'm going to add a touch of coriander to that, just to add some nice flavors. I'm going to add some black pepper. Instead of adding crushed black pepper, I'm going to add just a few peppercorns, just to add more flavor. I'm gonna add my veggies. I'm just gonna let that cover the chicken so the aromas from the chicken and the butter steam into the vegetables. And what I'm gonna do to create a nice gravy is chop that up with some chicken stock. I'm gonna let that slow cook so the heat and the sauce from the chicken can cook into the vegetables. My lamb's looking really good right now. It's still falling away from the bone, so that's gonna go for at least another 20 minutes. I'm gonna start preparing my chakalaka now. I'm gonna start off by adding my onions into a dry heated pan. Straight after that, I'm gonna add some butter quite quick because I don't want the onions to get very soft in this. A nice helping of butter. You could always do with a little bit more butter. I'm gonna give that a good mix, literally just to spread it around. We're gonna go in with the peppers next. Some carrots, some baked beans. I'm gonna give that a mix to put all my ingredients together. I'm gonna add my garlic. My favorite ingredient, which is the fresh chili. You want your chakalaka to be nice and hot. I'm gonna add some chopped chives, just to add a touch of color. So I'm gonna give that a stir, and I'm gonna switch the stove off to let the chakalaka cook on a reducing heat. I'm ready to plate. First things first, I'm gonna start filling this up with the meat. 
and potatoes. You want to get in as much as you want. I'm going to add the traditional sambal. I'm going to add a bit of chakalaka, which is going to add a nice spicy flavor to the dish. So I'm going to chop some coriander. We're going to sprinkle that all over this beautiful bunny chow. 